Hey guys, it's Adam AK Swimming Bird, and welcome to another Minecraft 1.9 snapshot. This is 15W42A, bringing buffs and nerfs to the new Elytra Wings, improvements to boats, two very useful rare enchantments, a new cost for brewing, and a lot more that we're going to cover. But before we get into the new, I want to get into the news. So we finally have a release window for the combat update. Developer Dinnerbone tweeted that 1.9 features will be complete at the end of this month, October. That means no new features after the next few snapshots. They will be focusing on bug fixes and getting this baby out to you guys to play. And on top of that, Dinnerbone also tweeted that he is going to take a break from Minecraft PC development for a few months. He'll be focusing on making the new launcher and other cool projects. I think he deserved it. He improved the Ender Dragon fight and did a bunch of other new features for 1.9, so he can take that time off and, uh, and rest on his laurels for a little bit. So speaking of new features, let's start with the new Elytra Wings. I think this is probably my favorite 1.9 feature. These were balanced quite a bit in this new snapshot. If you missed last week's where these were introduced, definitely check that out so you can see how to glide around with this new rare loot. But this week, they've been balanced a bit. They've got a few nerfs, but one big buff that is definitely going to make these guys more useful. So in the past, in the first snapshot, you could pretty much fly limitlessly. You could dive down and pull back like Mario with his wing cap and fly pretty much forever. You wouldn't have to lose altitude if you timed it right. You would dive to gain speed and then pull back to gain altitude again. But now you cannot do that forever anymore. It is more like Mario 64. Eventually you will have to land and you'll you'll gradually go down. You can still, you know, keep your height by diving and pulling back, but like a hang glider, you can't fly forever. And I think that's fine because the new buff is gonna make it so you basically can fly forever in a different way. Now another thing that is new with this Elytra that is uh, a little scary but is kind of fun is the fact that we will now take horizontal damage if we run into a block sideways while flying. You have to be going pretty fast, and it's kind of tough to do, but you can be diving down and hit a block sideways and take a bit of damage that way. Let's teleport back up again. There's even a new death message involved with this, so you can take fall damage if you're, if you're diving too quickly with these. That was already in the game, but now if you happen to hit into a wall at a sideways angle, you can take a bit of damage as well, and if I'm lucky here, we can get a cool new death message. But this is kind of hard to do, you don't take too much damage from this, and it's also tough, you have to be going at a pretty high speed to be able to have this happen. And can we do it? Almost! One more try. I'll talk about the other new features as well while we do this. Now you saw at the beginning there's a new crouching animation built in that Jeb talked about last week with the Elytra that, uh, there we go, we now have the new death message. We experience kinetic energy, and that only happens if you die from hitting a block sideways. Let's get back in the air before these monsters get me. So yeah, that's that's the new death message. So just be careful how fast you're gonna, you know, collide with a wall or the ground. So the crouching animation, I mentioned that at the beginning. You saw that, it, uh, it makes your wings kind of change around. If you do it in the air, though, my little guy kind of like sticks his tush out and looks a bit weird, he jumps down strangely. It's very odd, they might have to fix that. But if you are on the ground, it looks pretty cool. Your wings fan out, almost like they're a part of you. It's a little creepy, they're, they're starting to take over your player. But yeah, it, it allows you to crouch and, and look a little cooler with the wings. And this isn't just a visual design difference. Now when you crouch, you're a bit smaller finally, your hitbox is smaller. So in the past, a player is 1.8 blocks high, so we're a little shorter than two blocks, but if you crouch, you are now 1.65 blocks tall. So this is actually a tactical advantage if you're trying to dodge arrows or, or play PvP. Now remember that you will be smaller and harder to hit if you're crouching. Now in the air, you're quite a bit smaller as well. We are only 0.6 blocks tall by flying around, so you can fly into a one block wide space, and that's really cool. It's gonna be kind of tough to do, but you can manage it if you are uh, doing some fancy flying. I just, you know, flew headfirst into a wall, but I'm, I'm foreseeing some really cool maps coming out with some trick flying, recreating Superman 64 or something like that, <laughs> I'm sure. All right, but yeah, that that's uh, pretty much it for the, you know, face value Elytra changes, but there's a big change 
that I really appreciate that I'll talk about when we get into those new enchantments. So let's move on to those. Now these two new enchantments can be found in anywhere that you could find, like rare loot, like a dungeon chest, a, a temple chest, any of that stuff. You can also get it from fishing and trading with villagers for books. And I'll show you guys the, uh, having too much fun flying around here. Let's, uh, let's show you guys the two new books. They are called Frostwalker and Mending. Now Frostwalker, you want to put on your boots and you can see some of the effects here. It's a little glitchy right now, but the idea is that when you walk around on water, if you're at the same level or slightly above the water, it will make an ice path for you. And this is a new block. It's actually called Frosted Ice. You can't pick block this. It will spawn in briefly and it should eventually disappear. But there are some weird issues you can see. This is staying here. And the reason it's staying too long is because the light level was too high. But there we go. The morning sun has vanquished the horrible night and this is all going away very quickly. So Frostwalker, you wanna keep moving with this because as you can see, there's a few different levels of breaking that these blocks will go through before they disappear and turn back into water. So as long as you're moving, you can have this constant bridge over the water and travel around this way. But if you stand still, eventually it will break and you will be floating and have to find land before you can start making these again. So be careful and just keep running around. There's two levels of this that you can find. Frostwalker 1 will create a radius of two blocks around you with this frosted ice. And if you get Frostwalker 2, it adds another to that radius. So that's what I'm using right now. Frostwalker 2 has a three block radius of ice and you can use that to run around. Now it's got some cool quirks to it. You can ride other mobs while you're going around and it will create these little ice roads for you, even if you're on like a horse or a pig or something like that. And it will turn it into frosted ice only if there's no entity there. Like you can see these boats over here. If I was to try to run over and create ice around them, it won't ice these up because they're their own little entity. So you don't have to worry about that. Same goes for this pig. Anything in the way will not get frozen solid. So your little friends and uh, enemy <laughs> monsters and animals are safe from being turned to solid ice. Now this stuff is uh, it's a little weird. You can't get it normally and you have to kind of make it through this. But it has some other weird quirks as well. I mentioned uh, it's very strange because at lower light levels it doesn't melt, so it seems like it could be very easy to grief with this at night. But also if you lay down a bucket of water, normally that has one water source that can turn into ice and turn back into water, but if you have these, uh, these water sources flowing out, you can actually create more uh, more of this ice from the the flowing water which you're not supposed to be able to do and then when it melts you'll be able to just turn that into source water so as you can see all of that flowing water is now going to turn into source water and this easily gets out of control as you can see this water is going to spread like crazy so be very careful with this i think they've got a few bugs to work out as well but it is kind of cool. I do like being able to run across water. And even though the boats are really cool, the new boats are very useful, this is nice to have as well. Now you can't use this with Depth Strider, so you won't be able to move fast through the water and use this on top of the water, but it is a trade-off. And another little, little quirk here, as you saw over there, if you're at a lower level and you start walking around, you'll create all this ice. And again, because the light level is lower underwater, it makes these little permanent ice bridges. So you gotta be careful with those and try not to mess up your area by using Frostwalker, at least for now, until they fix some of this stuff. Now let's go on to the other enchantment. This is probably my favorite. This is going to be a breath of fresh air to most players that worry about their stuff breaking. It's called Mending, and there's only one level of this. You put it on any weapon or piece of armor, the Elytra, anything that you are going to damage over time like a tool or things like that and you put this on there and instead of drawing upon you know repairing it with materials you can actually draw upon experience so watch this sword in my hand and the elytra they're going to magically heal themselves with experience and it doesn't take that much at all it is so quick watch the elytra here as we grab this and now it is repaired a bit. Let's throw a bunch down here and you'll see before our eyes the Elytra repairs itself to full. There we go. And now we can go flying again. Almost full. But yeah, it's, it's only a few monsters 
that's all you need and you can repair any of your equipment as long as you put mending on there so this is going to be really nice for anyone who's got some awesome enchantments but ends up having the repair costs go sky high by fixing them over and over in the anvil if you're trying to mess with stuff for a long time then you're going to you know keep adding enchantments keep repairing eventually the anvil will make it so that the repair cost goes way too expensive for you to be able to try to pay for and that limit has been removed as well but it will double after a while so it gets into some insane numbers but now that we have mending we don't have to worry about that and this also applies to your offhand so I can have two swords with mending here and it will choose between the two to repair randomly any experience left over after you repair fully any of your mending items it will go straight to your experience bar so you don't have to worry about losing that later on but it will repair these first before it goes towards your own experience as well so this is this is just really cool I think it's an awesome way to make it where we can keep our enchantments as long as you can find one of these rare books of mending they're gonna be very valuable because then you don't have to worry about having things you can never repair down the line now if it doesn't work with shields yet uh, you can use the uh, the creative mode on the anvil or NBT commands to try to put it on a shield and it would be super useful for shields because shields are very brittle right now at least at this point but I wonder if they're gonna add that in the future we'll see so that is it for the new enchantments but that's not it for enchanting there's a few other things here now enchanting if you noticed with mending it doesn't say mending one anything that only has one level like infinity or flame it will just say the enchantment name it doesn't have the one next to it there so that's a nice little addition and anvil repairing this has to do with enchanting a bit because I just mentioned this but if you were to name something it would not re increase the repair cost when you keep uh, keep renaming it it'll keep the same repair cost so you still have to pay to name an item or, or, or something whatever you want to name but it won't add on to that leveling it will always keep it at the same you know area so it's not gonna make it so you are slowly making your items too expensive if you are trying to rename them and things like that so don't worry about that anymore a few more things before we finish up brewing stands now have this nice little whirly McGig crazy straw over here you now need to use blaze powder to use brewing stands so it'll filter through there and you get about 30 uses out of this so it's a little tougher to brew now but not too much it, it you can just kind of put one in it will stay in your brewing stand you don't have to take it out or worry it'll just fill up in there and you can leave it and get 30 uses out of it so it's just another way I think they wanted to make it where you have to go into the nether to be able to to uh, to do a few things so even if you could find a brewing stand in a way you still need to go to the nether to get the blaze powder to be able to run it or you could you know I think witches drop those so you could still get that there's other ways as well they removed the eye of ender trading I noticed in a previous snapshot they removed the ability to trade for eyes of ender with the villagers but you can get ender pearls so you really do still need to go into the nether to get this blaze powder for the most part so I think they're trying to make sure people you know go through the course of the game they don't skip right to the end they have to kind of acquire a good amount of items give a good progression to the game so you can't just run in there and grab these wings after you beat the dragon super early or something like that there's more of a build-up to getting the new items now you can also put that in a hopper as well to feed in there you don't have to manually put the blaze powder in there by hand last but not least though the new paddle boats they have been improved quite a bit let me take these boots off before we freeze the boats and uh, have to worry about that so these are the new paddle boats that we got last time they were super slow before but now they are pretty quick they've got improved handling and speed they're a bit faster than sprinting I'd like to see a little paddling animation here because it looks like I'm using my biceps I know I got some guns on my little Minecraft character but but you, using your, your forearm there or whatever to, uh, to paddle looks a bit strange. So hopefully they add that in later on. But yeah, it's a lot faster now. If you remember the last snapshot, boats were pretty slow. And now you can paddle pretty fast. If you do it rhythmically, you're supposed to be able to sprint quite a bit faster, as Dinnerbone mentioned. Because you have to use the, uh, the new fashion controls with the uh, right and left combined to paddle. Or just pushing one or the other to turn. We talked about that in the last snapshot but if you tap it it's supposed to kind of make you go faster it's hard to know exactly how I'm supposed to do it here and I don't notice much of a difference but 
The idea, though, is that we will eventually, there we go, <laughs> snag that pig. We'll eventually be able to have boat races and have different amounts of skill, depending on how fast you can paddle. And of course, with these new boats, two passengers, that little pig's tail is hanging out, but at least he's, uh, he's in the boat with me. And one last thing with boats over here that I want to show you guys. The crafting recipe now works for the different types of boats. So you can make a birch boat, a spruce boat, any of the other types. The only one that doesn't work for whatever reason is dark oak. The evilest of boats is, uh, you can't craft that yet, but I'm sure they'll fix that before 1.9 comes out. That is it this week. There's a, uh, until the new snapshot that's about to come out. I do want to apologize to you guys. My graphics card on my computer actually went kaput, so I had to order a new one. If you're watching this later, you probably didn't even notice if you found it in the search, but I did not, you know, have the ability to make the snapshot video for almost a week after it comes out, but I thank you guys for being patient. And, uh, and wait in to watch. I hope a lot of you guys enjoyed the snapshot video, even if there was a bit of a wait. Thank you again for watching. Let's go up into the sky, see if I can do one more crash into the cliff as we finish up. Thanks for, again for watching. If you want to leave a like, I appreciate it. And if you want to subscribe, there's more videos where this came from. And I'll see you guys next time for some more Minecraft. <laughs>